Hi guys, how you doing? You know me, I know you. A lot of people call me John Doe, but you know, a lot of you know who I, my actual name is, but it doesn't matter though. I thought we'd do another one of these where I sit down and just talk to you guys, because sometimes we do need to talk about things, you know. So I, I've lived in this country for several years. I'm coming up on six years here in Japan. And I've seen a lot of things happen in this country during my time so far here. And to be honest, I haven't been in a Western country during this entire time. And I've been to a lot of places. And this time I traveled to Turkey. I met the Turkish people down in Istanbul. I've been in the Philippines, and I experienced all the oppression and the horrible conditions the people face there. I've been to um, South Korea. I've seen the results of the Korea Peninsula being split in half. I've been to, God, a lot of places. Those are, just, those are just some examples. So I've seen things, you know, that have really had a quite strong impact on me. Known not only here in Japan, but in all these different places that I've visited and seen. You know. But the refocus here in Japan... There's something I notice about um, a lot of people who make, a lot of foreigners, people who are not natively born in Japan. They make a lot of videos and are pretty entertaining, and some people bring up issues that are good, but there's this one thing that I think no one wants to really talk about when it comes to Japan, and it is this deep, overwhelming sadness, and this deep, overwhelming alienation that a lot of people here experience, a lot of Japanese experience it, and it's quite hard for them to deal with it, the social alienation that goes on here. It's not their fault, all right? And they sit there and blame them. I've had my moments in the past when I was trying to understand a little bit about Japan and get, you know, kind of a hang of things here. I got reactionary at times, you know, and didn't really get what was going on, but as the years have progressed, I have got a deeper understanding, you know, of why Japan the way the way it is these days. It's not the people's fault. Let me break this down for you just a little bit about what it's like for the average person in Japan, especially Tokyo, because as you know, that's my home. Tokyo is my home, and right now I'm in my local neighborhood. It's kind of late at night, but let's get into like what it's like. They wake up pretty early, most people. Real early. All right, they crack of dawn. They gotta get up, get themselves ready. Usually, most people get themselves about two hours before they catch their train. A lot of people are waking up around 5 a.m., 6 a.m. They can get themselves ready, and they have to present a certain image that they're kind of, um, in a box, they gotta look a certain way, dress a certain way, or they're not acceptable. You can't even walk outside. It's that intense sometimes, the pressure here. So they, they hustle down to the train station, 
catch their train. Trains packed unbelievably. You know, people talk about the rush hour in the morning in Tokyo, but it's really hard to truly understand it unless you've actually experienced it. It's really intense and it's really brutal. And it's really, really just crowded. You're packed in like sardines in there. So they deal with that. Everybody's tired. You know, a lot of people are hungover because alcohol is a normal way that you deal with things here. Then everybody's in a bad mood, they're sleepy, they haven't got enough sleep. So they make it to work and it begins. Yeah, there's a guy coming home right now. It's about 12 midnight here. He's just getting back. Anyways, we'll get to that later. But they start their work day, and that's when it starts. The hierarchy here beats down on the average Japanese person intensely. They can't even speak their mind. They can't even disagree. If anything, they can't ask questions. It's really hard for them. It's, you do, and you shut up and do. And then the, the social construct of in-work is a, um, another issue that they're sitting there trying to deal with, right? Nobody gives a damn about how they're feeling. Nobody gives a damn if they're overloaded with work, which they often are every day. So they got to sit there and try to maintain this image that they're expected to maintain. The straight-laced, buttoned-up, tie right around your neck to almost choking you. And I got to sit there and obey. Obey, 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 absolutely obey. You can't say nothing. You do, as you're told. Or you're harassed unbelievably at work. It gets really bad for some people. So they deal with that all day, all that stress, you know, builds up. All these things that they, they, they know in their head are wrong and not right, but they can't say anything because of the harassment and the intimidation that goes on through this strict hierarchical system. So they finish work. You know, sometimes, right, I'm right here at a park bench, right in front of an apartment building, and I st I'm still watching people getting home right now. So they finally finish work at God knows what time. If you're lucky, you're one of these people that deal with the evening rush. It happens around from 5 to 6. It's usually 5 p.m., 6 p.m. in the evening. And everybody's just rushing out of these office buildings and rushing off these construction sites just trying to get their ass home. You know, be around some people that maybe cares about them. Or be around some people that, you know, release some of that pressure by being nice to them somehow because you know in Tokyo things are very can be very cold at times because everybody's on edge everybody's on edge because of what they deal with every day now if you can't get off work early you're expected to do this massive amount of unpaid overtime and you're pressured and intimidated to do it you don't get paid a lot of times and a company that says carte blanche they get away with it you know it's due because the weakening of um, certain organizations, certain structures over the years that would help would help um, workers. These companies have been very keen about that. There's some more people just getting off work. Yeah. So they finally, you know, and a lot of time, and often, if they're not having to do all this all this overtime, the boss looks at them, makes them go out drinking. Now, they don't really want to drink a lot of times. Maybe they want one beer after work, you know, catch a can. That's a convenience store, you know, drink it before you get on a train, or maybe drink it on a train if you're slick about it. So I've done that plenty of times. As long as you're cool and quiet, most people don't care that you're having one. You know, everybody knows what it's like here. So, you know, they got to go out and do they see the all unpaid overtime, or they got to go out and drink up some boss they hate, and listen to him just talk shit about how good he is, and they got to praise him and deal with him. And they finally can get home at God knows what hour. And they're so burnt out, man. I see it all the time on their face. And they're just, they're like this every day. And it's this extreme alienation. 
They can't. They cannot connect with people. They're not allowed to. They're just allowed to work and do as they're told all the time and they can't break out from it. And if you dare stand up, if you dare say hell no to this, man, the hammer comes down on you so hard, you couldn't believe it, man. There's a reason why suicide rate is so incredibly high in Japan. It's one of the highest in the world. There's a reason for it. It's because of the social alienation these people deal with. And I've been here so long, and I feel it too. It's happened to me. I've been intimidated and abused. In my mind, man, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to keep it together here. You know? It really is. Especially if you're living in one of these mega cities like Tokyo. You know? So, you know, it's at this point in my life, you know, please, guys, I'm telling you. Don't blame these people. You just don't know what the pressure they're under. You just don't know what the social construct is like here. People will drink themselves retarded here sometimes, trying to, like, get it out of their head, clear their mind, numb it. They can sleep for four hours, five hours if they're lucky. And they're just worked and worked and worked and beat down, right? And again, if you do say anything, you do stand up. They have a saying in Japan. They say, the nail which sticks up must be hammered down. And what that means is, if you don't get with the program, if you don't serve the interests of the bourgeois, if you don't get in line with the desire of the capitalist come after you viciously socially financially any way they can until either you sit down and shut up and do as you're told or you break and, and you end up jumping in front of a train or you end up going down to Shizuoka next to Fuji Mountain a place called Suicide Forest and kill yourself and kill yourself there. It's bad here, guys. So when I do these videos where, I, where you see me um, showing people protests and standing up, it's revolutionary, okay, to do that here. Those people are so brave, man. I know a lot of those people. And they're so brave. And you don't know what they're going through. You don't know the sacrifice they're making in their lives to be able to do that. So I just wanted to touch on that and give you a little insight into Japan that a lot of, you know, these um, foreign J-bloggers here, people, foreigners who make videos on YouTube just don't tell you about. And if you ask them about this video, don't expect the type of response or the type of description I'm giving you. They won't tell you. Because I don't mean to really talk shit here, but a lot of times, well, not everybody, but a lot of people who are, a lot of English speakers who are making videos here, they're doing it to show how cool they are. And they're just in this little circle with each other. It's like a circle jerk. Not everybody, okay? But a lot of people. And it's useless for me to name names, because that's just, it's not my style. I don't do things like that. Those people know who they are, and they can judge themselves if they are introspective enough to do so. So I hope you enjoy this video. If it's your first time ever seeing me, hey, subscribe to the channel. I'll put a little subscribe thing right here. And I, I do hope to have an interaction with you. So until next time, this is me, John Dole. Checking out.